Joe Murphy was a once promising prospect in the NHL, who would later go on to be a Stanley Cup champion. But what happened after that will shock you. This is the story of Joe Murphy. Joe Murphy became the first NCAA college player to be selected first overall when he was selected in the 1986 NHL entry draft by the Detroit Red Wings. During the 85-86 season with Michigan State, Murphy would rack up 61 points in just 35 games on his way to becoming NCAA Rookie of the Year. He would also win a silver medal at the World Junior Championships playing for Canada, where he would score four goals and a tournament high of 10 assists. Murphy would, although find it tough to crack the lineup in Detroit, with players like Steve Eiserman on the front line and Adam Oates heading up the second line. Murphy would bounce between the AHL and NHL, becoming a Calder Cup champion with Adirondack in 88-89. Early on in the 89-90 season, Murphy was part of a trade that would send six players between Edmonton and Detroit. Murphy would finally find his game in Edmonton on his way to helping Edmonton capture their last Stanley Cup in 89-90. He would spend two more seasons playing for the Oilers before being shipped off to Chicago. Murphy would continue to bounce around the league for the next few years, playing in St. Louis, San Jose, Boston, and Washington. It was during the last two years of his career where he was playing in Boston and Washington that his off-ice conduct became more erratic. Before he signed with the Boston Bruins, he had a tryout with the New York Rangers. Murphy would make bizarre accusations about his sticks being partially sawed in half and one of his skates being thrown in the river by the team's GM. After he signed with Boston, things didn't go much better. He lasted just 26 games before the team suspended him indefinitely for screaming profanities at then-coach Pat Burns. He made very few friends in the Bruins' locker room and questioned his teammates' work efforts and was known to be very argumentative with other teammates and his coaches. He was then shipped off to Washington and reportedly put on a very short leaf by Capitals GM. This would only last a year as Murphy would get into an altercation at a New York bar after a team event dinner. The Capitals would assign him to their AHL affiliate, but Murphy would refuse to report to duty and was then eventually blacklisted from the league and never played professional hockey again. In 2013, Murphy became the first head coach and general manager of the GMHL Alston Coyotes, but would have to leave the team halfway through the playoffs due to an undisclosed allegation which resulted in a trespass order issued against him by the town of New Tecumseh, Ontario. In 2017, Murphy was living in Costa Rica, but he ended up living on the streets and was eventually deported back to Canada. In 2018, Murphy was living homeless on the streets of Kenora and was reportedly involved in a class action lawsuit against the NHL for not treating his post-concussion syndrome. In March of 2019, Murphy completed treatment through the Adult Mental Health Services Live-In Program at the Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Center. But unfortunately, in the summer of 2020, Murphy was living again on the streets, this time in Regina, Saskatchewan. Despite earning over $15 million during his playing career, Joe Murphy was left broke and on the streets after becoming addicted to alcohol and drugs during his time as an enforcer in the NHL. A sad fate that was all too common in the NHL during this time period, which could have been avoided had the NHL taken care of their own players. It's all time, my-